A very good day to you people. My name is Mohitin guys. Today I'm going to talk about if or whether we need to include oil as a part of a diet and if yes, which one and how much? Let's see. Let me uh, begin with reading out the first paragraph from Dr. John McDougall's August 2007 newsletter. He says, when friends ask, why do you avoid adding vegetable oils? Begin by telling them, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And remind them that there is nothing attractive about wearing olive oil, flaxseed oil or corn oil. For this reason alone, most of your friends and family should stay, steer clear of so-called healthy oils derived from plant foods gaining weight can be expected from consuming high fat whole foods such as nuts seeds avocados and olives as well as free oils which are usually purchased in bottles i consider whole foods even with the even those with high concentrations of fat to be health promoting however people interested in losing weight and there's so many should avoid nuts nut butters seeds seed spreads avocados and olives since they all serve as sources of concentrated easy to consume calories a simple formula for health as the best one out there is one that comes from dr joel Furman, who says health equals Nutrients divided by calories. H for health equals N for nutrients divided by C for calories. In other words, the more micronutrients you can get in the fewest number of calories while still eating whole foods, the healthier you will be. So let's see how oil fits in this, uh, in with this philosophy. Oil is not a whole food. It's not food as grown. It's the fatty part of what was once a whole food, oil is extremely dense in calories, while vegetables typically have around 100 calories per pound and fruits around 300 calories per pound, oil has 4000 calories per pound. Nothing exceeds that. Even with all those calories, oil contains little in the way of micronutrition. Valuable omega-3 fatty acids sometimes but virtually nothing else here's a quote from uh, dr cadwell asselston he says no oil not even olive oil which goes against a lot of other advice out there about so-called good fats but the mono unsaturated and saturated fats contained in oils are harmful to the endothelium which is the innermost lining of the artery your blood vessels and that injury is the gateway to vascular disease it doesn't matter whether it's olive oil corn oil coconut oil canola oil or any other kind avoid all oils doesn't matter what is the name of the oil it doesn't really matter what is the source of the oil and really doesn't matter whether it's virgin or extra virgin or cold press was filtered or refined it really doesn't matter in the following video chef aj explains how oil is the most uh, calorically dense as well as uh, nutritionally bereft substance in this universe but i heard a lecture by dr caldwell b esselstyn jr the author of prevent and reverse heart disease and one of the stars of forks over knives and even though I knew that oil was fattening, because oil is the most calorically dense and nutritionally bereft food on the planet, it's 4,000 calories a pound. And what I don't understand is everybody agrees whether they eat sugar or not, that it's pretty much a junk food. The, the definition of a junk food is a food that has a lot of calories and no nutrients. Well, sugar is only 1,800 calories a pound. Oil is twice as calorically dense. So I knew it was fattening because Dr. McDougall has been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. But I didn't know until hearing this lecture that it actually caused damage to our endothelial cells, which are the life jacket of our circulatory system, and that all oil was atherogenic, diabetogenic, and obesogenic. And even though I was still overweight at the time, once 
Dr. Esselstyn explained it to me and showed those graphs, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I was a chef. It was very easy to not use oil. As a matter of fact, I call sugar, oil, and salt the evil trinity in my book on process, but it's from a culinary standpoint, oil is the easiest thing to get rid of. And I was a pastry chef for four years at a restaurant. I didn't use oil. Salt's the hardest thing to get rid of, and sugar's sort of in the middle, but it can be done. You don't need oil. I, I just did a cooking demo. You can saute in anything, and so you don't need it. And you know, the truth is, oil coats the taste buds of your tongue, so when you use it, now you're going to have to use way more salt to taste the food. So it really is a triumph of marketing over science. You know, all this EVOO and heart healthy. It's, it's, it's the least heart healthy food you could eat. You want to be heart healthy? Eat kale. Eat fruits and vegetables. The truth is all oils promote heart disease. A study in JAMA, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, they found that all oils saturated, monounsaturated like olive oil and polyunsaturated like flax oil, were associated with an increase in the plaque buildup of plaque buildup that clogs our arteries and leads to heart attacks. Oil is then atherogenic, causes atherosclerosis. Oil is also uh, oil also causes our red blood cells to clump up, which limits their ability to absorb and deliver oxygen to our cells and slows blood flow. Studies have shown that uh, the blood flow mediated dilation decreases by over 30% for, uh, for 4 hours after we eat a fatty meal. With such a decrease in flow mediated dilation, is it any wonder, is it any wonder that so many of us just, just crash after a meal? No, it's no wonder. Because we don't get enough oxygen to the brain after a fatty meal. But don't we need fats? Your friends will ask you. The answer is, in terms of your diet, your body needs two types of polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-3s and omega-6s. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids contribute to brain function. Omega-3s are also thought to reduce inflammation and reduce, uh, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Both omega-3 and omega-6 must come from our diet because our cells are unable to manufacture them. But it must be emphasized that our need for these fatty acids is very small. The National Academy of Sciences says we need only one fourth of a teaspoon for women to one third of a teaspoon for men of fatty acids per day. That's about 1 to 3% of caloric intake, which is super easy to achieve on a whole food, plant-based diet without any oils. At the end of the day, the truth is that essential fatty acid deficiency is essentially non-existent in the general population. In the end, let's see what Jeff Novick feels about olive oil and its impact on health. Okay, now everybody in here knows the difference between a health food and a junk food, right? Do you? Okay, sugar, what's sugar? It's a junk food and the reason it's a junk food is because it's the ultimate junk food. Basically a junk food is what we call empty calories. It gives you calories with no nutrients, and this is per tablespoon. As you can see, sugar has 50 calories, and it doesn't have anything else but a little bit of carbohydrate. So pretty much you could say sugar is the epitome of a junk food, correct? So what I'm going to do over here is put one of today's health foods, and then over here I'm going to put the second of today's health foods. And regardless of the marketing, if the numbers are worse than sugar, what does it make these health foods? Junk. Does so anybody know the first one I'm going to put up? Olive oil. Now let's go by the numbers. Per tablespoon, how's it doing on calories? Two and a half times. Does it have any protein and amino acids that you need, essential amino acids? No. Does it have any carbohydrates and glucose for your brain and muscles? No. Does it have any fiber to keep you regular and life going smoothly? No. Does it have any fat? 14 grams. Now here's, 
I know we're covering a lot of information, so I want to help you here with this question, because I know it gets a little confusing. Does olive oil have omega-3s? And before you answer, let me help you out. Omega-3s, are they a mono or a poly? Poly, very good. Olive oil, is it a poly or a mono? Mono, very good. So does uh, olive oil have omega-3s? A trace. Does it have saturated fat? 14%. Remember, all fats are a mixture. Does it have any vitamins? Well, it's got a little trace of vitamin E. Does it have any minerals? To get enough omega-3s, you'd have to drink or somehow consume 8 ounces of olive oil, which is 1,900 calories and 42 grams of saturated fat. Is that a good idea? How many of you know that two tablespoons of olive oil have three times the saturated fat of four ounces of white meat chicken? How many of you know that two tablespoons of olive oil have the same amount of saturated fat of four ounces of lean beef? Now people aren't putting chicken and beef on their salad if they're trying to limit saturated fat, but what are they doing with their olive oil? They're just pouring it on. 